Imam al Hussein reached out to this man. Who was he? He was the one coming out of Kufa when he encountered Imam al Hussein on the way. The Imam went to his tent and he asked him to come and join him. He said in response, you all know this part, he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, I don't think I, I'm ready to die, whatever the cause. But here's the deal, here's what I'm prepared to offer. I have a sword that's worth a thousand dirhams. And I have a horse that is the equivalent of a Bugatti Veyron. It's worth another thousand dirhams. I'm happy to part with these two possessions. I'll donate these to you. Just leave me alone. Imam al Hussein said to him, Amma wa innaka qad zahadta. Now that you don't wish to give us your contribution, your support, your backing, I don't need your sword, I don't need your horse. I don't need your sword because Hussein carries the sword of his father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. I don't need your horse because I have no need to flee. I don't need to run away from anyone. And I, know I don't need to run after anyone who's running away from me. You can keep your sword, you can keep your horse. Let me say this, brothers and sisters. Imam al-Hussein doesn't need my money. He doesn't need my contributions. He doesn't need my donations. What he wants from you and I is for us to make the commitment to join him. He wants your soul, is what he wants. He wants your time. He wants your effort. He wants your energy. He wants you to join him in person. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to say, well, you know what, I'm feeding two orphans in Afghanistan. I've done my part. Imam Hussein doesn't need your money or anything else for that matter. He wants you for you. Amir al-Mu'mineen has a beautiful statement in Nahj al -Balagha. He says, I want you, ahbabtukum li ajlikum. I love you for your own sake. So that I could help you, so that I could salvage you, as we've talked about earlier. The Imam said, I don't need it. You can keep that. But you know what? You better leave right now. Allahu Akbar. What a merciful Imam Hussein was. Why? He says to him, let me give you a piece of advice. If you stay here long enough until you hear my cries, and still choose not to join me, then you will fall face first into the bottomless pit of the fires of hell. So leave so that you don't get to hear me cry out for help. Sallallahu alayka Abu Abdullah. He has so much mercy and compassion, he, don't, he doesn't want this person to burn in hell like that. He says to him, then leave, go. Abdullah ibn al-Hurr al-Ju'fi left, thinking to himself that he's smart or that he was able to run for his life. He was killed that very same year. How? In the most pathetic manner. He goes back to Kufa after the massacre of Karbala. Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad gathers everyone around to decide what to do with all the people who participated in the murder of Imam al Hussein. He gives some people some gifts, he gives others some rewards. And then he says, Hang on a second, where are the notable figures in Kufa? Bring me those people so that I could find out where they were. So they go and bring them. One of the people who comes is Abdullah ibn al-Hurr al-Ju'fi. The Ibn Ziyad says to him, he says to him, where were you on the day of Ashura? Were you with us or against us? He goes, no, neither. I wasn't with you, I wasn't against you. I just decided to sit on the fence, to sit this one out. He said, but why didn't you fight Hussein? Did I not issue? A decree that every able person needs to carry his own sword and go and fight Hussein. He said, you're telling me to fight Hussein? Do you understand the regret that I feel right now? The remorse of not supporting him? He reached out to me in person. 
He specifically spoke to me, asked me. He said to me, you carry too many sins on your back. Come so that Allah may forgive your sins. I still chose to look the other way. And you're asking me if I should just have gone to fight Hussein? Ibn Ziyad said, you know what? Behead him. And they killed him right there. That's one example. The other example 